Hi, second graders. Today is problem solving day. I'm gonna help you with the A side today, and then I want you to go ahead and do the B side also, because it's good to have extra practice with problem solving. Let's read the problem together, because remember the first step is always, we have to read to understand. And then we'll make a plan and solve it and check. Okay, on Wednesdays, the children at Westcliff School can buy hot dogs, hamburgers, or chicken nuggets. They can drink milk or juice. Show the different ways Carrie can buy one of the meals and one of the drinks. Okay, now, let's see. We know that the kids can make three different kinds of foods and two different kinds of drinks for their meals. So let's make a plan. Um, let's put hot dogs for the first kind of food they can choose. And each column I've listed hot dogs first. And then I'm gonna combine the milk with the hot dogs in the first column, and I'm gonna combine the juice with the hot dogs in the second column. Now, the second food they can choose is hamburgers. So I put the food hamburgers on the left side and the right side. And what was the first kind of drink I combined? Right, it was milk. So I'm gonna do milk with hamburgers. And the second kind of drink is juice with hamburgers. Now we're gonna go down to the chicken nuggets. I just wrote nuggets because that was shorter. What was the first drink I'm gonna combine with the nuggets? Right, it's milk. And the second drink I'm gonna combine with nuggets is juice. That's called an organized list. It would not be organized if I went, oh, let's see, I think we could have hot dogs and milk, and I think we could have hamburgers and juice, and maybe we could have nuggets and juice. If you just started guessing and writing, it's not an organized list and you'd have a harder time thinking of all the different combinations. Now, when we go back and check our answers, we see that there are six different kinds of combinations of food that Carrie can buy if he tries all the different things that are served. Now remember, on the other side of this paper, you're gonna to have to circle the strategies you used. We made an organized list and we did use logical reasoning but we did not make a pattern and we did not draw a picture and we didn't do any of the other strategies. So just to today choose organized list and logical reasoning. Now I wanna also show you that today you're going to start doing multiplying by five. Now some of you might already know how to do this, but in case you don't, the clock is a great help for multiplying by five. I've got my clock right here. Remember when we count the minutes around the clock, we count by fives? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. I wrote those numbers here on this clock, but in the middle, there's a five. Now you notice on my clock by the one, there's a five. If I say one times five, that equals five. And look by the two, there's a 10. That's because two times five is 10. And look by the three, that's because three times five is 15. And by the four is a 20, four times five is 20. So you can use the clock pattern to practice multiplying by five. That's gonna help you doing this page. And then when you do this one, Remember multiplying is equal groups. So here you see three groups of five pennies. Three times five equals 15 pennies. Or we can say five pennies times three groups is 15 pennies. And the next one, one group of five pennies equals five pennies. Five pennies times one group is five. Look way down at the bottom. No groups, zero groups of five pennies is zero pennies. Anytime you multiply something times zero, the answer is always zero. Even if it's a thousand times zero, it's always zero. Five pennies times zero groups is zero pennies. 
have fun practicing multiplication and you're getting some new flashcards to try out today. Good luck. Bye-bye.